In this video, we're going to take a look at floating point numbers in x86. Specifically, we're looking at floating point numbers because they are what's referred to as a single precision, which means that they can fit in 32 bits of space, which makes it perfect for x86 based assembly. Whereas other types of precision, like double precision, require 64 bits. So we would need to expand ourselves from 32 bit into 64 bit. So for now, we'll stick with floating point numbers and see how we can work with basic decimals in the x86 programming language. So starting off, we could define our floating point numbers fairly similar to any other data that we would define in our data section. I could define a floating point number called x. I can use dd as the type, which would be define double word, which would be about 32 bits in size. And I could give it a value. So for instance, 3.14. Maybe I can do another one for 2.1. And then we can get into our program and try to load these into registers. And the way that we, that we would do that is using a move instruction, as you would expect. But we have to give it a few more letters here to make it work with decimal values. And those letters are two S's like this. The two S's here stand for scalar single precision. Scalar, because we're moving a single decimal value, and single precision, meaning that it's a 32-bit floating point number. Now, we specify scalar as in a single value because the registers that we move the data into are actually able to work with both what we would call packed data as well as scalar data. With packed data, we have multiple values being moved in at the same time, whereas with scalar, we just have a single value. So for now, you can just remember that when you use this instruction, we're moving one decimal value into a register. And this is the most basic kind of way that we can work with these decimal values. Now, the next little trick here is that rather than using registers like EAX, EBX, these typical 32-bit registers, we actually use special registers called the XMM registers. We have the registers 0 through 215. So there's register 0, register 1, register 2, so on all the way up to register 15. And these are used specifically for storing our floating point numbers. So we can use these for decimal values. And from here, the instruction is the same. We just get the value that's at the address of x. Remember, these square brackets indicate to get the value at this address. This address is pointing to 3.14. So 3.14 gets loaded into xmm0. And we can do the same sort of thing with our other decimal value, right? So into xmm1, I could load the value y, right? So you can see that that's relatively straightforward. And then from here, we could say, okay, what about our other operations? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Well, same sort of principle is going to apply. Add SS is going to add together two decimal values. So in this case, XMM0, XMM1. What it's going to do is it's going to take the value in this register. It's going to add it to this value, store the results inside of the destination here. So you can see that really things aren't really changing too much. The instruction names are changing to indicate that we're working with decimal values. But aside from that, everything is very similar to what we were usually doing with x86 values. Now from here, we can finish off our program, move into ebx the value one, we can interrupt with an ADH like this, and then we'll be good to go. Now, when we move the one into EBX, you can see that we can mix and match our instructions, right? We can use EBX still and EAX and all these registers. We just have these bonus registers that are working with decimal values as well. Now let's get this program actually up and running because I wanna show you what actually happens when we work with these decimal values because there's some really interesting things that we need to consider when we work with decimal values in low level languages. And these may or may not be intuitive depending on what kind of experience you have with binary numbers. What I wanna show you is when you move into this instruction, this has moved the value into XMM0. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna print out this value. The way I do that is I say P dollar sign XMM0 dot V4 underscore float zero. This here, the dollar sign XMM0 is the register that I'm trying to print, and I'm trying to print out the float value inside of it. And that will give me the value in the register. So that's how we get that value actually printed. You can see here that the value is 3.14, then a bunch of zeros, and then a one. And that one at the end looks a little weird, right? We didn't actually define that. And we'll find that when we go to our next value, we're gonna get a similar type of phenomenon happening. So if we take a look at the float for this, 
I get 2.0999, which is not quite 2.1. It's a little bit off. And you might be wondering, well, why are these values not exact? And the reason for that is because when these values are stored, we use a special notation called IEEE. I think it's like IEEE floating point notation, something among these lines. And this notation is something that we use to try to represent decimal numbers as accurately as possible. The problem is that we have some limitations in what we can do. We're still working with powers of two, in this case, actually inverse powers of two, and we can only get so close to our decimal values. So actually the decimal values will be stored a little bit off. There'll be a little bit of a precision issue. And if you've worked with languages like C before or other low level languages, you'll be familiar with this type of precision issue. For instance, in C, if you wanted to compare two decimal values, you wouldn't typically do like A equals B to check equality. What you would do instead is you would say A minus B is less than some small number like 0.001 or something like that, right? So we don't actually work with exacts when we do floating point numbers. We have to account for this lack of precision. So this is something that's totally normal. And you're going to see this from time to time when you work at these lower level languages. And you'll see as well that it carries through. If I step through into my add operation and I print out my register, right? We're gonna see that the result is not quite right. It's 5.23, it should be about 5.24. So you see that it's rounded off, like it's it's off just by a little bit. If we were to round the number, it would be perfectly fine, but it's off a little bit as is. And because of this, we need to make a decision about our precision. We need to say, well, do we want it to be slightly off or do we want to round it to get it to the correct answer? You know, how do we want to handle this particular precision issue? And that's something that really requires a lot of thought. It requires differing approaches based on the application. So you really do have to be aware of this type of phenomenon when you're working at lower level languages. So with this, you now have a bit of a better intuition behind the idea of how floating point numbers are being stored and worked with in x86 assembly. This is a nice little introduction to the idea of being able to work with the actual values and being able to see these values being used in these particular ways. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.